Welcome to Retro Basin. Today, we're going to be talking about the most famous lore that you've never heard of. Stick around. Retro Basin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my ray -Ban. It may not look like much. Just a quarter ounce spinnerbait with a couple of little Colorado blades and a living rubber skirt. But rest assured, there is more history packed into this little quarter ounce bait than perhaps any lore in fishing history. By the way, if this is your first time here at Retro Bassin and you like to fish at old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from the golden era of bass fishing, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know we post a new video like this one. The year was 1972, and the place, the second ever Bassmaster Classic on Percy Priest Reservoir, just outside Nashville, Tennessee. There, Tulsa, Oklahoma tackle shop proprietor and lure designer Don Butler would utilize one of his own inventions, the SOB Spinnerbait, to take first prize in inadvertently igniting the tournament-driven tackle industry. The story of the Okie Bug starts in Tulsa, Oklahoma in the late 1960s. There, a lumberyard owner and avid fisherman by the name of Don Butler decided to dedicate one wall of his store to fishing tackle, and this would eventually become the Okie Bug Tackle Shop. Nobody knew it then, but Tulsa, Oklahoma, and specifically the Okie Bug, would soon become the birthplace of professional bass fishing. It was almost a divine place in time and many of the future trailblazers of the industry, including Ray Scott, Johnny Morris, Jimmy Houston, and Roland Martin, would all cross paths at the Okie Bug. First to intersect Don Butler and the Okie Bug was an Alabama insurance salesman by the name of Ray Scott. At the time, Scott was desperately trying to realize his own dream of starting a national bass fishing organization and elevating bass fishing to the level of other professional sports. So the story goes, prior to a meeting of the Tulsa Bass Club, where Scott planned to first pitch the idea of the Bass Angler Sports and Society, he was practicing his sales pitch with Don Butler over a hamburger steak at a local cafe. Inspired by what he heard, Butler asked what would be the cost of a membership. And having not given that too much thought, Scott responded, $10 a year. So with that, Don Butler handed over a $100 bill and proclaimed that he wanted a lifetime membership. And that's the story of how Don Butler became the first ever member of the Bass Angler Sportsman Society. Later, when Scott needed money for a direct mail campaign, uh, it was Butler who actually donated $10,000 for the project. There were other soon-to-be-famous visitors to the Okie Bug shop. Rumor has it that when a 23-year-old Jimmy Houston walked into the store, Don saw his potential and encouraged him to enter the Lake Eufaula National Tournament. Houston didn't have cash, or a ride there for that matter, and Butler paid Houston's entry fee and even drove him to the event. Houston would play six, collecting his first ever tournament check. And the career of the man from Cookson, Oklahoma was off like a lightning bug. Another visitor to the Okie Bug at that time was a young man by the name of Johnny Morris, who desperately wanted to crack into the tackle business. Morris had convinced his father to allow him to dedicate an 8 foot by 8 foot section of his Brown Derby liquor store in Springfield, Missouri to fishing tackle. But Morris had one big problem. He could not find anyone to sell him fishing tackle at wholesale prices. Butler agreed to sell some of his inventory to Morris and armed with a $10,000 loan from his father, Morris drove the Tulsa with a U-Haul and filled it with wholesale merchandise from the Okie Bug store. Some hours and roughly 180 miles later, Bass Pro Shops was born. These were some fast moving years for the bass fishing world. And in 1971, a jetliner left Atlanta, Georgia with 24 anglers bound for the Bassmaster Classic at a then unknown and undisclosed destination. We all know by now that uh, at 10,000 feet, Ray Scott informed the contestants on the plane that it was bound for Lake Mead in Las Vegas, Nevada. Don Butler competed in that first Bassmaster Classic, but top honors actually went to Bobby Murray. But at the second Bassmaster Classic, 
This time on Percy Priest Reservoir, just outside Nashville, Tennessee, Don Butler used his own Okie Bug Spinnerbait to win the $10,000 first prize, which, according to Bassmaster, ignited the tournament-driven tackle industry as we know it today. So you see what I mean? There is a ton of history packed into this little quarter ounce bait known as the Okie Bug. This is a pretty nice compact little spinnerbait. It's got an old school living rubber skirt, a nice cone head, and it's got two Colorado blades and a little swivel. This is a fun little bait to fish. This is a great small water bait. I'm sure that it's probably pretty good on Percy Priest in the day as well. Um, but really a nice, neat, compact little bait. A couple things I do want to show you real quick here. So we do have some original uh, Okie Bugs in the package. Check that out. It says Bassmaster Classic Winner. Ah. Uh, and I love the Okie Bug logo. Here's an old school patch from, I don't even know how old this thing is, but check it out. Looks like a mosquito with like spinnerbait wings and a hook for a nose. <laughs> I love it. Here is a uh, original Okie Bug hat. And this jacket we picked up uh, recently, it says that it was worn by Don Butler. I think this is probably too small for Butler. I don't know how big he was, but this thing barely fits me. But it does say on here, uh, American Angler Pro Bass Tour, Okie Bug, 1977. Uh, <laughs> the Okie Bug sold a bunch of stuff, not just spinner baits. Got some stinger hooks here. I guess if you want to make your own spinner bait. And this sort of looks like a little George uh, in the making. As you know, Retro Bass, and we don't just talk about the lures. We actually get out there and use them. I am a uh, collector second, but a fisherman first. So today we've got a couple hours out on the bank. I've got a couple of different ponds that I've been fishing just south of here. And it is overcast outside. There is a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. It should be honestly perfect conditions for some farm pond spinnerbait bassing. There's one. There's one. Oh, got one. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, that's a nice fish. Oh, man. Oh, chunk. Come on, buddy. Get up here. Ah, there we go. Oh, nice little fish on the Okie Bug spinnerbait. Oh, man. <laughs> I knew there were fish in here. It's weird, this doesn't necessarily look like a super fishy pond. It's right by a bunch of apartments. There's fountains, the water's kind of weird. But there are definitely some chunks in here. Um, awesome. I wasn't sure what bait I was to be fishing with today, but I checked the weather. It's supposed to be overcast skies and about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. I thought it would be perfect conditions for a little micro spinner bait like this. Oh man, that's awesome. We'll get this guy unhooked. So there we go. There's a nice little largemouth bass. He looks kind of white, doesn't he? Ah, uh, we'll let him go and see if we can get a few more. That guy jacked up my spinnerbait. So there was one little modification I made to the Okie Bug. I was getting a few uh, short strikes on this thing and it's not necessarily a surprise. That's the hook that this thing comes with. It's a, a couple issues. One, probably not the sharpest hook in the world. Um, and secondly, it's almost really short. Look, it comes way up um, into the skirt. So I did add a spinnerbait trailer hook, which hopefully is going to make a little bit of a difference. So I think I got a new rule of thumb. 
If I look at that weather report and it's gonna be blowing 10 to 15, I think I might be leaving that track at home and start doing a little pond hopping. Maneuver that tracker in that much wind, especially these deep Texas lakes is tough. And likewise, these ponds in Texas have been pretty tough for me, except on super windy days like we got today. So that might be what I do from now on, I don't know. There's one. Oh. Ha <laughs> ha! See what I'm saying, son? <laughs> oh, that guy's hooked oddly. That's gonna be a problem. Let me work on this. Oh. Okay, so another nice pond bass on the Okie Bug spinnerbait. So maybe that's why I'm missing him. Look how he's hooked. It's like he swiped at it and that stinger hook got him somehow. Very, very interesting. He like totally, totally missed the bait. That's a healthy little dude, isn't it? Ah, oh, he's got some really cool iridescent green colors on his uh, on his forehead there. These are chunky little healthy bass in this thing, aren't they? Oh man, let's let him go. So obviously this is a long discontinued bait and these things do go for a pretty penny online. So I think my line's okay, but I'm gonna retie probably a little bit more often today than I normally do. Uh, just because I really, really don't wanna lose an oaky bug because of a bad knot. We've hit about, I don't know, uh, 30 yards of this bank and I've already had about four nice hits, caught two of them. Um, man, this is like perfect spearbait conditions. Oh, this wind. I would be cursing this wind if I was on the boat right now, 100%. Instead, I'm like, bring it. The water's a little bit murky. I'm wondering if I'm fishing a little bit too fast. That's the trouble. You get like a few fish, you get excited, you start like burning that thing. I'm gonna slow down. There we go. There we go. Oh, there we go. Oh gosh, nice fish. Okay, so I said I was gonna slow down. I don't know if this happens to y'all, but I get a few fish, I get crazy excited, and I start burning whatever lure I'm fishing. So I had a missed strike. I think these fish weren't getting it that well. So I slowed way down, started slow rolling the oaky bug. We ain't doing too bad today, huh? <laughs> oh man. But look, another nice, chunky little largemouth. Man. These guys are all the same size, but oh, that's a blast. Thank you, Mr. Don Butler, for one more. Maybe? It's acting. <laughs> I was like, do I have a weed or do I have a fish? <laughs> Man, a little bit of both. Look at that guy. Wow. That thing's at least like, what, three pounds? Ooh, I can barely get my thumb in his mouth. <laughs> so I think this is 100% the smallest fish I've caught in 2020. So that's awesome. Oh my God, look at that little guy. No wonder I was getting some short strikes on this thing. He's like, and this is not a big spinnerbait. 
And it looks giant next to him. That might be a fish. Oh, that's a fish. I don't know what that is. Feels weird to be another catfish. Now it's fast. Oh. Not as big as the other ones I was getting, but nice little fish just the same. They are almost hitting this thing weird, kind of like they're rolling on it or something. It's a it's a weird uh, spinnerbait hit today with the old sob. <laughs> nice little fish though. So I do want to talk for a hot minute about this new old combo that I'm fishing with today. I think I found this combo after watching an old Jimmy Houston spinnerbait episode when this was the rod and reel that he used for basically the whole episode. The rod is a Shimano Magnum Lite GT 1581 fighting rod. And I've paired that up with a Shimano Bantam Magnum Lite bait cast and reel. This is quickly becoming my favorite combo for spinnerbait bassing. Uh, so thank you, Jimmy. Oh, hit the blades. So that's one of the things I love actually about this really odd design is as far as these are, this Oki bug has a couple of really teeny tiny blades that honestly most rods you probably wouldn't feel that well. But with this, I'm able to keep my fingers up here and I can literally feel every little tick that those blades are doing. Now I know why Jimmy liked this thing for spinnerbaits. There's one. God, they're hitting so weird today. <laughs> there we go. Look at that, that is the second one I've hooked in that underneath the lip. How does a spinnerbait bass get hooked there? I have no idea. I mean, are they just like rolling on it? That is the second one today, so weird. Ah, there we go, another little pond bass. Oh, there's one. Oh, there's one. Oh, a nice fish. That's a nice fish. Oh, one more. There we go. Come on, buddy. Get you up in. <laughs> Wasn't as nice as I thought. So I guess it wouldn't be an episode of Retro Bass and without at least one odd catch. I thought that two inch bass was gonna be it. The old channel cat on the Okie bug. <laughs> this is the second, I think, ever um, catfish I've caught on a spinnerbait. I don't know why they love spinnerbaits, but look at that guy. I'm going to try not to get stuck by him, if at all possible. Oh. Well, <laughs> thanks for tuning in to Retro Bastion. Till next time, keep them blades a turning, and definitely. Fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin.